Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here, here today we're doing another video on atomic structure and electron configurations. So let's get started. Bam! Today we're doing the electron configuration, orbital box diagram, and quantum numbers for W, which is atomic number 74, which is tungsten. So the root word here, why the W? It's coming from Wolfram. Wolfram. And that is tungsten. So you're going to find tungsten on your periodic table. And look, oh, there it is, tungsten on your periodic table. Okay, you're going to find the prior noble gas to tungsten and then do the electron configuration there after that. Okay, so here we go. The prior noble gas to tungsten is xenon. So do xenon, which is atomic number 54, and then do the electron configuration thereafter. That would be tungsten. So here is the electron configuration for tungsten. It is xenon in brackets, 6s2, 5d4, 4f14. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to show you another way to write this. Okay. Another way to write this is xenon, 4f14, 5d4, 6s2. And then you're going to ask yourself, why are you writing it that second way? The top way is the way that we've been writing it all along. All the videos have been going through that process all along. Now, the bottom way is perfectly fine. In fact, the bottom way is a little bit more correct. The bottom way is how we have the energy level filling. So think about it this way. You know that the atom is a sphere and the nucleus is in the center of that sphere. And then the orbitals, okay, those are three-dimensional regions in space around that sphere, that orbital, that uh, nucleus rather. And those are in increasing n surrounding it. And as you increase n, they get farther away. So as you look at that second electron configuration with the blue arrow facing towards it, the four subshell is interior that of the five subshell which is outside of it, which that five subshell is outside the four, but interior of the six. And the six subshell is outside, and that is the largest principal quantum number, therefore it is the most outside. In fact, this really surely helps you determine the number of valence electrons in tungsten. Tungsten is, of course, a transition element, and therefore it's in the boot. And because it's in the boot, it has two valence electrons. But you can actually see it when you write it in the energy level filling of the electron configuration. It's the largest principal quantum number, six, and then it's um, so two electrons because it's 6s2. Now, if you look at the top one that I did, the 6s2 is interior. That's just how we write it as we come to those elements and we count up to atomic number 74. Either way of these is correct. So both of these is perfectly 100% correct, okay? So make sure that you know that. However, this way, there is something wrong with this one. So I want you to look carefully at this and figure out what is a, what is a skew, what is a miss on this one that doesn't work. And I'm gonna circle that. These two things here are separated and you cannot separate the shell and subshell. They must be together. Okay, you cannot separate things. So you cannot have this what's right in here. So we're going to draw a red line right through this. So this is something you never do. Okay, so I'm showing you on the first one that I did and the second one, both of those are valid and correct. However, this third one with the red line going through it is incorrect. You cannot have that N of 5 and L of D in this case. So 5D, you cannot separate the 5Ds. You must keep the 5Ds all together even though you're not counting them in that particular order. Okay, so now that you've got the electron configuration, we're going to get the orbital box diagram of this and valence electrons. Okay, so orbital box diagram, I'm following the first one that we did for tungsten right away there the first time. So the first electron configuration, I'm following that order. Now you could do the orbital box diagram using the second one, and that is the energy level filling, and that is perfectly fine too. So either of those two ways for electron configuration and orbital box diagram are perfectly fine. So make sure that you understand that. Now, 
I'm going to place the electrons in these orbital box diagram as is appropriate as I come to these electrons. So as I walk myself up to tungsten, then I'm going to place these electrons. So that first one is here up in the 6s2. Then the next one is down in that 6s2. Sorry, in that 6s orbital. Sorry. Okay, then the next one is going to be a 5d1. Now after 5d1 comes all the 4f's. So that's why I'm jumping to the 4f, but I will come back to the 5d's because I'm not done with the 5d's. So I'm going to place all the electrons in the 5d's following the rules of electron placement in the atom. And you notice that the first thing I do is follow Hun's rule here and that I have a half-filled orbital of the 4f's. Okay, now is the time in which you can start backfilling these. So you're going to backfill these because the 4f is already 4f14. Okay, now, now you can come back and start filling in the other electrons up to tungsten. And you've got three more to do, one, two, and three. So that's three more to do. It's still in the 5D. So 5D2, 5D3, 5D4. Okay, that's the order of filling. That's how it should be. Okay, now you're going to ask yourself, is this paramagnetic or diamagnetic? Okay, paramagnetic has unpaired electrons. Diamagnetic has all fully paired electrons. So, do you have any unpaired electrons in tungsten? Oh, most certainly you do. How many? Four unpaired electrons in tungsten, and it is paramagnetic consequently. Doesn't matter how many unpaired electrons you have. If you have one unpaired electron, it's paramagnetic. If you have 50 unpaired electrons, it's paramagnetic. There's no elements with 50 unpaired electrons, but just FYI. Okay, now we're going to get a set of quantum numbers to represent a particular electron. Oh, I did already mention there the uh, valence electrons, and it's a uh, two valence electron. One, because it's in the boot. Two, it's the largest principal quantum number, six, and it's 6s, and then there's two in that 6s, too. All right. So I'm going to circle an electron right over here, and we're going to get a set of four quantum numbers to represent that circled blue electron. All right, so remember, N, L, M sub L, M sub S. You're going to pause the video, write out the set of four quantum numbers that represents that circled electron, and then you're going to restart that video. So here we go. So N is in the, N is the four. They say 4F, so therefore the N value is four, okay? The L value is the type of orbital. The type of orbital is an F. So remember the L values that correspond to the letters of the orbital. So if it's an S type orbital that's sharp, then it is a zero. If it's a P, it's a one. If it's a D, it's a two. And in this case, it's an F, so therefore it's a three. Okay. Now the next thing that you're going to do is label the boxes with the middle box being zero to the left of that negative one, negative two, negative three to the right of the zero is a positive one, positive two, positive three. Now which box am I in? This is the 3D orientation of that orbital within that energy level. And that is a N, uh, sorry, uh, M sub L value of three because it's in box number three. Okay, then the next one is the spin of the electron. It looks like that electron is up. That is upwards facing. That's to heaven, so therefore it's positive. So the M sub S value is positive one half. So I'm going to write all these down here for you. So N of 4, L of 3, M sub L of 3, and M sub S of positive one half. There's a set of four quantum numbers to represent that particular circled electron. Now notice that that is not the last electron. You should be able to get the set of four quantum numbers to represent the last electron directly from the periodic table. Okay, I'm not done yet. I still have a few more things to cover here. So I want you to look at this. That's a xenon 6s1, 5d5, 4f14. And I want you to look at this one electron configuration Compare that to what the white one is, the top one that I did before. So what is the difference between the two? The difference between the two is that the 5D orbital is half filled. Remember, half filled and completely filled orbitals are very low in energy. Okay, And the reason that this happens is that that 6S2 electron, one of those electrons drops down into a 5D orbital because that 5D orbital is interior that of the 6s okay this is the actual electron configuration for tungsten and if you look at tungsten on the periodic table molybdenum and chromium follow the same pattern 
and that is the chromium, molybdenum, and tungsten, and seaborgium, actually, would be the same way. Their actual electron configuration is different than that which is predicted. Okay, and that is all of those have a D sublevel that is half filled completely, and the S sublevel is half filled as well. That is lowest in energy, so this is very important to understand. This is very similar to the copper, silver, and gold that we did before. Okay, those were completely filled D shells. Okay, remember half filled D shells and completely filled D shells are lower in energy. In fact, it doesn't even have to be the D shell. It could be an F subshell or a P subshell. The half filled and completely filled are lower in energy. Okay, I'm still not done here. I'm hoping you're enjoying this. I got a really cool hat to show you today. So don't forget about that part here today because it is uh, atomic stuff. So that is another crazy hat. And I want to thank Jordan and Wyatt very much for this hat. Jordan, you have given me more hats and more toys than any other student in all my years. So thank you very much, Jordan. So this is such a cool hat. I love this one because it's atomic humor. And that is RB37. What element is RB? Well, that is rubidium. But look right over here. It says root beer. And root beer is my favorite soft drink. I don't drink a lot of root beer, but when I do drink a soft drink, it is most certainly root beer. I love root beer. So Jordan and Wyatt, thank you very much for this hat. By the way, if you love this video, give me a thumbs up. It's a really complicated one, so give me a thumbs up on that one. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would greatly appreciate that. And you have a fantastic day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.